Okay, so we all get it. Protecting our eyes is a must. But if you're new to riding or not really sure what to look for in a set of goggles, there are a couple things that you should keep in mind when you're looking to pick up a new pair. What's up everybody, I'm Mitch. Thanks so much for checking out another video on my Fit for Moto YouTube channel. Now in this video, you've guessed it, we're talking about goggles. Now look, I get it, you go into your local store, you go online, and there is a ton of options when it comes to goggles and you don't know which ones to get because you think, well, the higher end ones should be better, right? And the really cheap ones, well, they're probably just gonna be cheap. And yes, okay, there's some merit to that. But this video is more about a couple things that I've learned over 25 plus years of using all different kinds of brands, all different kinds of price points, just some things to keep in mind. And it's the same stuff that I use when I'm looking at getting a new set of goggles. And if you keep these things in mind that I'm gonna show you, Generally speaking, it will steer you in the right direction when you're picking up a new set of eye protection. It's by no means an exhaustive, detailed search of all the different things they have and all that kind of stuff, but it's just a couple tips to keep in mind. So roll the intro and let's hit it. One of the first things to keep in mind is how much you sweat. Depending on the type of goggle and the type of foam system used, if you're the type of person that sweats a lot while you ride, some goggles may allow that sweat to run down into your eyes. So believe it or not, some people will actually use a feminine hygiene product to put around their, above their eyes so that the sweat doesn't pour into their eyes while they're doing their moto. Personally, I'm not a big sweater on my face, so I've never really had that problem, but I've seen a ton of people do that. Believe it or not, that's actually a pretty common thing. That being said, there are different types of goggles that have different types of foam in them that's gonna help with some of the sweating when it comes to rolling down into your eyes. Now, you might not be able to tell online, but different goggles are gonna have different things that channel the sweat away from your eyes and back down to the bottom of the goggle it'll just exit and fall out. And like I said, not all goggles are created equal. Just because they're expensive doesn't mean that they're gonna tackle that situation necessarily. So if you're a big sweater, keep that in mind when it comes to the foam on the goggle, when they sit on your face. Does it look like the kind of stuff that's gonna absorb it? Does it look like the kind of foam that's gonna deal with a ton of moisture? That's something to keep in mind. The next thing is kind of on the heels of sweat foam, but it's about comfort on your face. Some goggles that are set at a lower price point may not have the same level of comfort that some higher end goggles have. Now that doesn't mean that you need to go out and spend all the money to have a comfortable goggles, but things like triple layer foam help make the goggles feel more comfortable. Now I get it, this might not seem like a very big deal, but believe me, when you go over riding on the trail or something like that for a couple hours, if you haven't experienced this before, it starts to get a little annoying after a while. And what I mean is some goggles, they don't have a lot of foam on the on your face where it, it becomes comfortable and what I mean by that is some goggles have a more comfortable fit on your face and because not all of our faces are created equal as you can imagine not all goggles are going to fit the same on your face either and just because it's a high-end goggle versus a low goggle that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a comfortable fit that's not a guarantee whatsoever some goggles have triple layer foam on them that helps to keep the comfort level up and helps to deal with that sweat that I was talking about before and some goggles, like the eye relief on them, it just sits kind of on like your eyebrows and that's really annoying versus kind of higher up on your head. Again, it depends on how your face is built. I find personally that I have issues with a lot of goggles not fitting properly. They're a fantastic goggle, they look nice, they kind of check off all my boxes. But then when I put them on my face, I constantly find, and you might even see this in some of my videos, you'll find that I kind of use my shoulders to bump my helmet up, which moves the goggles up on my face. So a lot of times I'll be riding and as I come into the corner, I'll just give my shoulders a little knock and it bumps my helmet up and resets the goggles on my eyes so they're comfortable again. That's, that's a big point for me is how well do they feel on your face? Again, price doesn't mean everything. I've used high-end ones that do the exact same thing. So keep that in mind. How well do they feel on your face when it comes to comfort level? You probably noticed by looking at the different goggles that not all goggle lenses are the same. They have different shapes and sizes and with that, different fields of vision. If you're looking for a lot of peripheral vision, then you might want to consider which goggle you go with based on its lens design. Yeah, so as you can see here, some of the goggles that I have don't have the same peripheral vision, the same field of view that some of the other goggles have. Now, generally speaking, you're going to find that the higher end goggles, they have a bigger lens that fills more of your face hole in your helmet. 
that allows you to have more vision. And that's important because more vision allows you to gather more information, which helps you lead to better decision making when you're coming up on another rider or corner or obstacle or whatever it is. More information is better. So a better field of vision, a bigger peripheral vision in the goggles will help you with that. And an example is this set of spy goggles I have here, as you can see, they don't have the same field of vision as this pair of, this is actually one of the lower end 100% goggles. They don't have the same field of vision. These were much more expensive goggles than these ones. And as you can see, they just, you can see more with the 100% goggles, which is another reason that I really like them. So that's something to keep in mind. And it may not matter to you. Maybe like, I don't care. I'm not going to pay extra money for that. But when it comes to information gathering, decision making, things like that, a field of vision is really important. And again, not all goggles are created equal. Now, one of the key reasons that we wear goggles is to protect our eyes. And that means whatever goggle you choose needs to be able to withstand some impacts. These things like rocks or tree branches or whatever debris you might find coming towards your face. Okay, so having a goggle that's going to hold the lens securely in place is a pretty important factor as well. Now, this might be where some of the more expensive goggles have a better security system for the lens. A lot of the goggles I have here have a type of system where it, the lens will actually pop out and it's got a whole pile of little anchors, little seats, little notches that the lens will sit in to securely hold it in place. Because if you get driven in the face by a rock or something like that, which I mean, if you're riding with your buddies, you're out at the track, that's going to happen quite a lot. You'll have a lot of impacts on your lens. You want a goggle that's going to hold that lens securely in place. You know, some of the really cheap, some of the really lower end goggles, they may seem okay with some flashy colors but they might not have the security holding that lens in place that you need so it doesn't get punched out and then <laughs> you just wear a goggle frame without the lens at all. And not only is that dorky, it's not very safe either. So you want something that holds it in place. And lastly, one more thing on the lens. Having an optically corrected lens is a nice touch as well. What the hell is optically corrected you ask? Well, as you can imagine, having a thin piece of plastic in front of your eyes doesn't exactly allow the light that's entering it to move naturally. What happens is that the light gets bent differently when it hits the lens, which may distort the image that your eyes see just a little bit. Yeah, so having an optically corrected lens changes the way that the light bends as it hits the lens, goes through that plastic, and then hits your face and enters your eye. That's a pretty important thing. So you would think to yourself, well then, Mitch, theoretically, Optically corrected lenses are perfect, right? Well, not really. Keep this in mind. Our faces are all different. We all ride a little different. And what happens is when the lens is sitting on your face, when the goggles are sitting on your face, as you move around, well, so is the lens. The lens is going to shift and move as well. And with that, the light coming in is going to get bent in different directions and again, change the way that it hits your eye. That being said, optically corrected lenses are a little more beneficial because the light coming in is going to be more true to what you're actually seeing. That allows you to gather more information, like I said, and lead to better decision making. So with a wider field of vision, with a higher peripheral vision, that kind of stuff with clearer images, if that makes sense, coming in. So, so the obstacle that you see in front of you, you know, might be a rock sitting this way or whatever. It's just, it's a crisper image for your mind to see and relay that information into your brain, which leads to better decision making. Again, it's stuff that people just are like, they do what? Yeah, all kinds of stuff um, that's really neat when technology and stuff with the lenses, but nonetheless, it's a couple of things that you wanna keep in mind when you're looking at a set of goggles. Yes, you could go out and spend a ton of money on an expensive set. Yes, you can go, I don't really give a hoot about an expensive pair of Oakleys or something like that. Um, I'm gonna cheap out and get the lower end stuff. I just wanna protect my eye. Sure, and completely, depending on what your budget is, that may be a consideration too. And I'm not even saying you have to go out and spend all the money on the expensive pair, but there's a couple things to keep in mind because like I said, they're not all created equal and all of our faces are different. So maybe head to your local shop, try some on and then go online. See if you can find that same pair for a better price or maybe your shop has the best price. Regardless, see if they fit well on your face. Make sure that they're gonna keep the lens in there well. Optically corrected is nice. Is it the end all be all? No. Can you still rip around without them? Absolutely. But something to consider. Anyway, I hope you liked the video. Hope you found it somewhat informative. Leave a comment below. Let me know what your favorite pair of goggles are. Obviously I'm partial to the 100% and I'm not affiliated to them in any way. I just happen to like their goggles. Leave a comment below. Tell me what kind of goggle you like. I'd love to hear from you. 
Anyway, stay safe, ride safe with a good set of goggles on. We'll see you in the next video.